everyone! Now that we've had a chance to look around Photoshop Elements a little, I hope that you're excited to dive right in. We're going to start with photo editing. Now in my opinion, I always think that a layout starts with photos, so that's where I always start in my workflow. We're going to look at a few of these really simple tools that Photoshop Elements has to help your photos pop a little bit more. There are some more robust tools that we have in Elements available to us, but we're going to start with some of these guided tools that are really great and will help make a big improvement in your photos with just a few clicks. When we were working on setting up our workspace, I had you click up here to be in the expert mode, which is where we're going to be most of the time. But for right now, we're going to switch over to the guided tab here at the top. Now Elements has these great photo editing guided tools. And the great thing about these is that you don't really have to have a lot of Photoshop knowledge. They will walk you through step by step exactly what you need to do. So you'll see up here they have them divided into basic photo editing. There's some color edits, some black and white edits, some different effects, fun edits, some special edits, and some photo merge edits. We're going to stick with the basics. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to open our photo that we want to edit. So I'm going to come up here to File and Open. If you're on a Mac, you can do the hotkey command of Command and O. If you're on Windows, you can do Control and O. You're going to navigate to the place that you have the photo that you want to edit and click on it and click Open. Now down here at the bottom, we have a photo bin. If for some reason your photo bin is not open, just click on this little tab down here at the bottom. And you can see the little thumbnail of the photo that I want to edit. I'm going to start the edit of my photo by making sure that I have clicked on the thumbnail of the photo that I want to edit in the photo bin. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to choose this Levels Guided Edit. Now when my photo opens up in this guided workspace, you'll see that our workspace is much more simplified than it was when we were in the expert mode. If your photo opened and you had your photo bin open, you can choose whether you want to keep that open or if you want to close it down. I'm going to close mine down so that I have more room to see my picture. Over here on the left hand side, you will see we also have a couple of tools. The top one is a magnifying glass that you can use to zoom in or out of your picture or you can use the slider over here at the top. You can also use the hotkey commands of Command and Plus if you're on a Mac, or Control and Plus if you are on Windows to zoom in, and then it's Command and Minus on a Mac, or Control and Minus on Windows to zoom out. When you're zoomed in, you can also use this hand tool right here to grab onto your picture and to slide it around. Over here on the right hand side of our screen, we have our instructions on how to create a levels adjustment. Photoshop gives us these step by step instructions so that we know exactly what to do. When we create a levels adjustment, what we are doing is we are editing the lighting of the photo by editing the shadows, the highlights, and the midtones. So, the first thing that we need to do, Photoshop tells us, is that we need to create a levels adjustment. So, we need to click on this button and click OK to create a new layer. It's going to open up this dialog box. On the left hand side we have a slider and this adjusts our shadows. The middle one adjusts our midtones, and the one on the right adjusts our highlights. I'm going to start by sliding my shadow slider over to where it's just reaching this little peak right here. And then I'm going to adjust my highlights by sliding it over to the right until it's reaching into this part of the graph. And then I still want a little bit more brightness, so I'm going to slide my midtone adjuster over to the left to make it a little bit brighter. Now, if you're not happy with what you've done with the sliders, you can always reset and try again. 
When you're happy with what you have, you can click OK. Now we can see the effect that this levels adjustment has made on the picture by going up here to view and changing it to before and after. On the left hand side, you can see my picture before. It's pretty muted and over on the right hand side, it's brightened up quite a bit. Now that I'm done with this levels adjustment, I can come down here to the bottom and click on next, or I can click on cancel if I decide I don't want to use this edit anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Now Photoshop's going to ask me over here on the right hand side, what do I want to do with this picture now? Do I want to save it or do I want to continue editing it? And in edit, you can choose whether you want to do some quick edits or if you want to move it into expert mode. Right now we're going to move it over into the quick editing mode and it's going to move us over into this quick edit tab. The quick edit tab is just what it says it is. These are quick edits that you can apply to your photo to enhance them even more. You can see that they're grayed out over here so all we need to do is to change the zoom tool and we can close down this tool options to see our photo again. Over here in the right hand side we have a list of the different adjustments that we can make to our photo. We are going to focus on the color and the sharpen adjustments. We are going to start with the color by clicking on the color. Now I want to add a little pop of color into my photo and I can do that by either using the saturation or the vibrance adjustments. The drawback about the saturation is that it increases all of the colors in the photo. So especially with skin tones, you have to be really careful because very quickly your skin tones can turn orange. I prefer to use the vibrance because it's a little bit smarter about what colors it chooses to enhance. Now you can set your vibrance by either clicking on one of these squares or you can use the slider at the top. I prefer to use the slider so I have a little bit more control. Right there looks about good. So it just gives me a little bit more color. I'm going to adjust the sharpness of my photo by clicking on the sharpen adjustment. Now before I add any sharpening edits to my photo, I want to make sure that I'm zoomed in so that I can see exactly what I'm doing. To do that, I can either use the zoom tool, this little magnifying glass, or I can use the hotkey command of Command and Plus on a Mac or Control and Plus on Windows. I want to zoom in to where I can see her eye because that's a good indication of how much noise I'm introducing into the photo. So click on the Sharpen tab, and I'm going to start to sharpen it by sliding the slider over to the right hand side. You will see if I add too much sharpening, it adds a lot of noise around her eyes, and that's not what I want. I want to add just a little bit of sharpening, and that's why it's beneficial for us to zoom in first. And when I'm happy with where it's at, I'm going to zoom back out by using Command and minus on a Mac or Control and minus on Windows. Now I can save my photo as it is here by going up to File and Save As. And I'm going to rename my photo so that I don't overwrite my original one. And I'm going to go ahead and save it just as a JPEG and click Save. My quality I want set to 12 and I'll set OK. Now that this photo is all edited, it's ready for me to pull into a layout. I'm going to go ahead and close this photo down now that I'm done with it. I'm going to switch back over to the guided edit because I want to show you one more thing that you can do with the levels adjustment with a different picture that I have. So I'm going to go up to File and Open and open my picture. I'm going to click on the thumbnail of the picture that I want to edit down here in the photo bin and I'm going to again click on this levels guided 
edit. Now you'll see in this picture it was taken inside of a gym and the lighting of it has made the whole picture really yellow. So I want to color correct that. Now to do that I'm going to start by creating the levels adjustment. Click OK to add a new layer. Now when my levels adjustment opens you will notice that I have these three eyedropper tools. These eyedropper tools will help you to set your white balance by allowing you to choose something in the photo that is either supposed to be black, gray, or white. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to set the white point, so I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to click up here on this wall, which is supposed to be white and you'll see that it instantly changes the color and the lighting of my picture. And if I decide I want to make further edits to it, I can go ahead and use my sliders again to adjust my shadows, my highlights, and my midpoints until I'm happy with how my picture looks. Now if you click on something and it turns your lighting to something really crazy looking, then you can hit the reset button and try again. When you're happy with how you have it, you can hit OK, and then hit Next. And I'm going to go ahead and save it as it is, so I'm going to hit Save As, rename my picture, save it as a JPEG, set my quality to 12, click OK, and now my picture is ready to go into my Project Life layout. Now that we've had the chance to go through a couple of examples of how to edit your pictures through the guided mode, I hope that you'll take some time to play around with the different edits that are available there and see how they work on your pictures. Um, like I said before, these aren't really robust tools. There are other things that are available to you in the Elements Editor, but this is to help you get your feet wet in editing and give your pictures a little pop before you put them into your Project Life layouts. If you have any questions at all, you can email me at digital at beckyhiggins.com.